Hey everybody, welcome back to another Making Stuff video. Today I am going to continue working on the 4x8 CNC router and I've got a goal to have the computer, the monitor, and the keyboard. I want to have all of that mounted onto the frame of the machine and I'm going to use something similar to how I did on the CNC plasma cutter. And I also want to have the x-axis not necessarily finished but at least put together enough that I can put power to that motor and make that X axis move back and forth. So let's head on over to the table and let's get started. All right, so I've got my monitor, keyboard, mouse, computer, I've got all that mounted, and it is mounted to the frame of the machine. And I did this exactly the same way I did with the CNC plasma cutter, but I did use something a little bit different, and that is I used a little micro PC instead of an old outdated PC that I installed Linux CNC on. And I've mounted it right here above the monitor, so I still have access to the power switch, the USB ports, and the SD card, so that way I can import pictures that I've drawn on my notebook computer. I can import them into Linux CNC, and I still have access to all this. Now the articulating arm, the computer tray, the keyboard and mouse tray, and the computer itself, I've got links to all of this down in the description of the video. Okay, so I am finished with these two aluminum plates and I'm ready to just put a motor and a drive reduction system on top of here and start getting some movement out of this. But first I want to point out a few things. 
And first is this aluminum plate here. I made this in a separate video, and if you haven't seen that video, I've got a link to it right here in the corner and also down in the description of this video. So check that out if you're interested in how I made this on the MPCNC. And then second, I would like to explain why I cut this piece off the back, off of this top here, and it has this blemish in it that I didn't like. And this is also 5 8 thick aluminum, and it's got some weight to it. So every little bit of weight I can get rid of on this axis is a good thing. And then third, I would like to point out that this plate here, after I machined it, I realized that it has a bow to it. So it is curved like this. Not by much, but it does have a slight curve. And I didn't really notice it until I mounted it to these linear bearings. And when I tightened up these inner screws on the linear bearings, everything still worked. But when I tightened up these outer screws, it bound the bearings up and you had to almost just give it a good shove just to make it move. It didn't have this smooth scroll that it has now. And I know a bunch of you guys are going to say, hey, you should have machined the back of this, blah, 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 and all that. Well, I don't have the capability to do that in my shop. So I came up with another fix, and that is my playing card shim trick. And I just put a little piece of playing card behind the outside parts of these linear rails and then tighten the screws down. And that did the trick. I still get this smooth scroll on the linear rails and I didn't have to do any machining on this plate. Now maybe in the future, I can go back and redo this plate or make another plate, but uh, right now, this channel is all about using what you got, and all I had was some playing cards, and I made it work. So now all I need to do is put together another drive reduction assembly, and then wire it up, and I should be able to get some motion out of this x-axis. All right, so I got it all assembled, and this is the same drive reduction assembly I used on the Y-axis. It's just rotated 90 degrees, and it is laying on top of this plate instead of hanging from the bearing plate like it does on the Y-axis. I Also, I'm using a little bit smaller of a motor than I am on the Y-axis because this doesn't have as much mass that it has to move. And I've got links to this motor in the description of the video. And I also want to point out that I'm also using the same little tensioning mechanism that I used on the Y-axis. And that will keep constant tension of this pinion gear and this rack, it'll keep them where they're meshed together with the correct amount of tension. All right, so I've got the X-axis completed. It is all hooked up, wired up, ready to go. So I've got Linux CNC here, ready to send it a command. Let's see if we can move the X-axis. All right, so it's all hooked up and it's moving, so I'm pretty happy with it. 
The only thing I couldn't do was hook up the proximity sensor uh, so it could automatically home itself and that's only because I'm waiting for the part to arrive in the mail. I would like to point out that I have a complete bill of materials along with a cost that I've put into this machine so far over on the Making Stuff webpage and that is www.makingstuff.info so head over there if you're interested in any of that type of information. I also have links to all of the tools and parts that I used in today's video down in the description of the video. So it's gotten pretty hot out here today and I'm gonna call it quits. I really can't go any further anyway because I'm waiting for parts to arrive in the mail. So if you like the video, please give me that big thumbs up. And if you aren't a subscriber, please consider hitting that subscribe button and ringing that bell so you don't miss any upcoming Making Stuff videos. And thanks for watching.